Hello, I'm Rebecca the Maths Lady, here to help you become an expert primary maths teacher so that all your children love maths and become fluent, creative and confident with it. This is the second video in the series on teaching maths to children who are six or six to seven years old, which in the English primary maths curriculum is year two. And this video is all about teaching children to calculate within 20. In this video, I'm going to explain the two deep structures that children need to have mastered to fly with this topic. The first structure is the structure of fives and ones, and the second structure is the part-part-whole structure of addition and subtraction. And then I'll explain how we teach children to apply these two structures when they are completing addition and subtraction within 20, so that they can all really deeply and clearly visualise what's going on with those calculations. And they're not relying on simply counting up or down one at a time. And as ever, with children of this age, we'll be using plenty of apparatus because a lot of children haven't yet got really well-developed working memory. Many of your children will need to work in a multi-sensorial way. This topic is the most important topic you'll be teaching this year because it's absolutely crucial that children become fluent with this topic at this stage because they're going to move on very quickly after this. So even though there might be lots of challenging and enticing work on your curriculum with bigger numbers, it is so important that you allocate plenty of time to this topic and that you get it right and that you carry on with it until every children is fluent with it. And by the end of this video, you'll really know what that means. Right, let's get started working on the structure of fives and ones. This is a structure that's so common in number, but a lot of people learn it so young, they don't even remember that they learnt it. And it's all about this. How many lines are there here? Well, that's very difficult to count, but if I show you it like this, it's 17. There's instant recognition. So the structure is here in tallies of fives and ones, but it's also here in fingers and toes. It's here in this very technical bit of apparatus. If those pegs were all the same colour, it'd be really difficult to count them. But once you know they're in fives, it's very quick. It's here in the reckon rack or the math rack. It's definitely here in 10 frames if you're using 10 frames. And it's also the fundamental structure of the abacus and the soroban. And this is the year of teaching when children need to become fluent in instantly recognising it. In general, teachers work with one of those pieces of apparatus. You don't want to flood children with too many, as well as with children's fingers and toes. So every child will come to understand two pieces of apparatus, the fingers and the toes, and whatever the teacher is using, that represent that structure. And once they've got it in two ways, and they've connected them, they will have developed a deep understanding of it. So what that means at this stage, is with your preferred bit of demonstration apparatus, you keep showing children numbers and asking them to name them. And you keep naming numbers orally or with digit cards or with written words as you're teaching children to read their numbers to 20. And children have to demonstrate those numbers correctly as fives and extras. So they may use 10 frames and they must always fill a five before starting the next five. Or they may use their fingers and toes and we use toes for the tens, which is obviously very easy if they're on the carpet and very difficult for me here demonstrating, but here we go. So 13 would look like that and 17 would look like that. So you need to make sure children instantly recognise numbers shown in that way and then they need to be able to partition each of those numbers. So if we're working on the number 13, they need to be able to tell you partitions of 13. So one child might see 10 and 3, another child might see 5 and 8, and you can see how they're recognising these numbers in 5s and 1s as well. If you go to 6 and 7, then they're having to partition the 7 into a 4 and a 3, which is slightly different, but is really important maths as well. And they want to start working systematically. So we see 1 and 12, 2 and 11, 3 and 10. And if you've got the bright sparks who can do that really fluently, then you can ask them, how many ways can you partition 13 into three numbers? Can you work systematically? So that's the essential work you need to do on fives and ones. And if you want more detail in that, it was explained more thoroughly and more slowly in the year one video on that topic. And here's a link to that now. 
The other deep structure that children need to understand is the part-part-whole model of addition and subtraction. And that essentially says that addition is where you know two parts of a number and you're finding the total, and subtraction is where you know the total and one of the parts and you're finding the other part. So we could look at it like this. This is our partitioning tree, and at the minute it's got 10 balls in, or apples on the tree, or oranges on the tree and you can change the number of balls in there. And if we shake it like this, this tree is now showing 10 subtract three, because we've got three balls in this part and we have to guess what's gone into this part of the tree. Now, when you understand subtraction this deeply, all the other ideas of subtraction that it's taking away, so we've done 10 and we're taking off three, so nine, eight, seven, so there'll be seven in here, or subtraction is counting on. So we're starting with three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So there's seven in the other part. Or as subtraction being the missing number in addition, they all fit together when you understand that subtraction for primary school children is a missing part. And of course, we can turn that round and we can see that missing part there to check our answer. So when you're teaching subtraction to children of this age, you certainly want to do plenty of subtraction as taking away. Children need to be able to count back fluently from 20. And doing subtraction as taking away is a great way of practicing and subordinating that counting backwards. Subordinating, I mean, using it to do something more complicated. And if you want to delve into the part, part, whole model a bit more deeply, there's a video that I did on that for year one teaching and here's a link to it now. You'll also find links in the description for this video just below. But we need to move on beyond that. We need to unite these two structures, the structure of fives and ones and the structure of part, part, whole in the way that we work with children. So let's look at what that means in practice. The fabulous Jeff Kutcher has created this worksheet for me, which you can download where all the free worksheets are at www.authenticmaths.co.uk forward slash worksheets. And there's actually a button on the bottom where you can go to Jeff's site. And if you've got Adobe Acrobat, you can download a version of this, which will generate as many variations on this worksheet, just different calculations, same structure as you like. And it'll generate worksheets with answers as well. For both of us, this is a lockdown labor of love creating these videos and the worksheets. Right, let's look at this. Question one is six add seven. Six add seven. So traditionally in maths education, you are taught that first of all, children need six objects and seven objects and they need to count all of them. And then they can start counting on. So they'll start with their six and count on seven. One, two, three, four. Flash it into your toes because we've got 10 now. Five, six, seven. So the answer is 13. And then as they get smarter, they'll count on from the larger number. So they'll start with the seven and count on six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. I'm not that energetic. Um, it's much easier when you're on the carpet. But when you think about this with the structure of fives and ones, it goes further. And this is what some children get and kind of puzzle out for themselves without even necessarily being aware of what they're doing. And some children don't see. And so as they move onwards, some children are flying and others aren't. And with good teaching, you can make sure they're all flying. So let's look at this with, say, the wreck and wreck as one of these fives and extras bits of apparatus. We've got seven and we're trying to add six. So we need to add three and we've used three of the six, so we need another three. And there's our answer, it's 13. Now there's masses going on there because the child has had to partition six into three and three. So they're using their partitions of small numbers, which we did a lot of work on in the previous two years of teaching. And now we're beginning to subordinate it. There is another way that a child might see this calculation. They might see it like this, seven, add six and they may see the 10 and the three and see that it's 13. So when we're working with addition, there's usually two ways that children can visualize what's going on. One is when they go past 10, they're partitioning the number they're adding and adding it in two parts. And then they can see their answer as a teen number of the second part of that addition. 
and the other is where they see the numbers side by side like that and they see the 10 and they see the answer. So that's what's going on with addition. And here's your seven add six with your 10 frames. You can either move one, two, three counters across like that to fill the first 10 and see the 13. Or you could just put the 10 frames side by side and see the 10 in the two columns and the three in the extra three that are left beside them and see the 13 that way. And if you haven't got fancy 10 frames and you want to use 10 frames, just get all the staff in your school to buy their eggs in boxes of 10 and you can use counters or Lego bricks or whatever you've got to do exactly the same thing. Now, what about subtraction? Let's look at this one. 13 subtract what is 11? Let's look at the coat hanger this time. 13 subtract what is 11? And they can see the 13 splitting into the 11 and the missing part. And the structure of fives and ones makes it really easy to see. You can certainly do this with your fingers and toes. You can do it with any of these bits of apparatus. If we look at another subtraction here, we've got 13 subtract six. Now you absolutely can and should do this as taking away and try and get the children to count back. It's really hard. And then when you swap to the apparatus, it's actually easier and children love things that are easier and that will pull them in to really developing their ability to visualize holistically what's going on. So you should be pulling out worksheets like this often and when children are doing them they should be doing them with their fingers and the toes or with some apparatus in front of them until you know that they don't need that apparatus because they're seeing it in their imagination and that's why they no longer need it. And then still you need to carry on with your calculations within 20 to build fluency because your children are still so young and they forget things really quickly. I suggested you just needed one bit of apparatus together with fingers and toes. If you want to refresh this topic later in the year, then bring in another piece of apparatus to keep children interested and give them something new to play with. So your takeaways from this video are that children need to learn to instantly recognise the numbers to 20 when they're grouped as fives and ones. And they also need to be able to partition those numbers into two parts, ideally systematically, so they can find all the partitions while still visualising them as fives and ones. They also need to have a deep understanding of the part part whole model and how subtraction is finding the missing part and how you can do that by counting on or by taking away. But more importantly, you can do it by visualising the whole number and the two parts within the number. That's why we've been doing all that work on partitioning numbers that are expressed as fives and ones into two parts, because that is subtraction. You're given one of the parts and you have to puzzle out the other part. If you have any questions or comments about this video, please do add them below. If you want to talk to me, I do live streams on a Sunday morning where you can ask me anything on this video channel. If you like this video, please make sure you subscribe to the channel so you can find these videos again. If you've time to give it a like, that's awesome. Or to share it with friends or colleagues who you think might find it useful. This is just a labour of love to share good teaching practice so that other teachers can love their teaching too and do a great job. And we can raise a generation of children who will be brilliant mathematicians. The world needs that. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be back again in the next video in this series to look at numbers to 100 on the bead string. And I really hope you'll join me for that video soon. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day. Bye for now.